Imagine a situation which gives you pleasure. Your own personal fantasy. Your deviant fantasy. Imagine the surroundings. Those around you. Is it at work? Or at home? In a street? Or a public place? Who are you with? Friends? Colleagues? A lover? A stranger. Now go over that fantasy again and again. Concentrate on the details. Put yourself there. Relive it again and again and again in your mind. And think about how you feel. You will notice that if something is denied you, your desire for that thing is increased. Conversely, if you do something that you enjoy and do it to excess, it destroys your interest in the thing. Denial creates desire. Desire is destroyed through repetition. This is the essence of satiation therapy. Every day you will know what to expect. You will watch images from your fantasy. You will continue to watch those images until they become the entirety of your daily experience. You will be bored. You will yearn for other stimulus. But there will be nothing else, only the endless repetition of the same. You will watch those images until you will no longer be able to see them, until your desire has been destroyed and the screen is blank. Madam, I believe that your treatment may be able to cure me. I have of late become obsessed by the writings of the 19th century novelist Leopold von Sacha Massoch. His fantasies have troubled me so deeply that I feel I have no other choice than to attempt to relive his life, and in so doing, end his control over me. How often does this behavior occur? If only it had, I have never acted it out. If I could but once, I am convinced it would cease to torment me. Perhaps you misunderstand. All of our clients have been assigned to us because of actions they have committed. If you have never acted out your fantasy, there may be nothing wrong with you. Would you like to reconsider? No. Very well. My case history. I am beginning to enjoy it, she says. That is enough for today. But a diabolical curiosity has taken hold of me. I have a dreadful desire to see you tremble under my whip. To see you suffer. To hear at last your cries of mercy while I go on whipping you without pity until you lose consciousness. Yes, you have awakened dangerous tendencies in me. Now get out of my sight before I am tempted to destroy you. Beautiful you are. Fool, give me the whip. No. Stay on your knees. Well? Silence. She raises her arm. The blows fall thick and fast. The back arches to greet the whip. Have you had enough now? No. Tread on me. Tread.
trample me underfoot. I'd like this play acting. Then hurt me in earnest. That's all for today. I said, that's all for today. Thank you. She is beating me. She is beating me. Are they raising these thoughts? Or fixing them in my mind? She is beating me. Are they curing me? She is beating me. Or showing me how to imitate the symptoms? Perverted by the very treatment that was meant to cure me. She is beating me. Very well. She is beating me. I shall accept everything. She is beating me. Do everything they say. She is beating me. They shall be responsible for what I become. They are responsible. Please stick to the original text. She is beating me. She is beating me. My slave, the conditions under which I accept you and tolerate you at my side are as follows. You shall renounce your identity completely. You shall submit to my will. If ever you should forget that you are my slave and do not obey me implicitly in all things, I shall have the right to punish and correct you as I see fit, and if I should mutilate you, you shall bear it without complaint. You hereby recognize that I have the power and the right to torture you to death by the most horrible methods imaginable. And should your chains ever become too heavy, you will be obliged to kill yourself, for I will never set you free. After a period of one month, both parties will resume normal activities and the contractual arrangement shall be considered as never having occurred. Yes. Very good. You wrote this yourself? No, it's copied from the book. Haven't you read it? I've been very busy with my other clients. Well, will you sign it? As a rule, we never become directly involved with our clients. Maybe you don't agree to the conditions. No, that's not necessarily the case. Very well. I shall write my name on this blank piece of paper so that at any time in the future, should you wish to write a new contract, you can fill it in as you see fit. Thus, I am entirely in your hands. In 1875, Leopold von Sacher Massach married a woman by the name of Wanda, the same name as that of the central character in Venus and Furs. Contrary to popular belief, the novel was not based upon his relationship with his wife. Rather, he forced his wife to change her name and to relive the fiction. He secured this arrangement contractually, stating that if she did not play the role, he would not write. And as she lived on his earnings, she had no choice but to comply. Do you ever have thoughts that you wouldn't want others to know about? Have you ever felt controlled by a chain of events? Do your problems tend to go away if you ignore them? In conventional interaction, Touching and moving closer are powerful vehicles for signaling increasing intimacy. To move within three feet of a relative stranger or someone with whom there is a formal relationship may be resented as an invasion of personal space. At the other extreme, moving beyond six feet usually sabotages personal discussion and creates a coldness in interpersonal relations. She's cold, but yet she fires my heart.
surprise. Yes. Fear. Yes. Anger. Yes. Anger? Yes. They can't both be anger. What have we got left? Disgust, happiness, melancholy, and neutral. Anger? It must be anger. I can't have got it wrong. It's not possible. Of course, but one must constantly relearn the correct behavioral patterns, especially if one is required to teach them to others. I do know that. Try to block out your emotions and just tell me what the image represents. I am not being emotional. I do not feel anything. Well? Neutral. Neutral? Neutral. Leopold, I'm terminating your treatment. You can't give up. You're under contract to help me. And you. You're forgetting that there is another contract, written in your own hand, which gives me permission to do with you as I please. Of course, but you are too intelligent and professional a woman to be compromised in such a manner. I'm thinking of referring you to another therapist. If that's what you want, then of course you are right. We should find someone else, but someone from outside the clinic. No, that's not what I meant. I won't allow it. Ah. You are not ready to leave yet. So you do care for me. Dear sir, I would be very grateful if you could publish the following advertisement in the personal column of your newspaper. Thwarted lover seeks the acquaintance of a strong and attractive male to entertain and give pleasure to his partner, Wanda. A mature, professional woman. John, remember your posture. Correspondences returned in kind, discretion assured. Alan? More eye contact. That's good. You're not going to join us? I've had something published. I'm to find you a lover. My private life is no concern of yours. Letters in the first instance to Leopold, P.O. Box 257. Ever since I was a child, I've felt it hanging in the air above me. As a child, my mother had many lovers. One day I hid in the wardrobe and watched her with another man. I'm powerless. Through the keyhole, I saw everything. I'm powerless. I wanted to cry out, but I'm I could do nothing but watch and wait. I'm powerless. Wait to be punished. I'm powerless. I braced myself. I'm powerless. I long for it. I'm powerless. But it does not come. I'm powerless. Leopold, in response to your notice, I would very much like to entertain your wonder. I believe I fulfill the requirements and agree to meet on the condition that it is discreet and in private. Well, will you meet him? Leopold. 
Surely you wrote this yourself. If you do meet him, you will be released from your burden, for I shall never ask you to strike me again. He will become your lover, and your infidelity will torture me constantly. Champagne for two at 10.30. Will that be all, madam? When my guest arrives, would you be kind enough to show him to my room? Of course, madam. Thank you. He's here. How are you feeling? Oh, fine. Perfectly normal. How would you feel if I said that you seemed happy? You think so? Yes. I suppose you could say I do have a positive mental attitude. If I was to disagree with you, would you think that I disliked you? <laughs> How could you possibly disagree? I've given you all the right answers. Do you ever have thoughts that you wouldn't want others to know about? <laughs> no. I knew you'd ask me that. No, I don't. I have plenty of like-minded friends, people I can talk to, share my feelings with. Have you ever failed to see something through because you were afraid of the consequences? Let's not talk anymore. Do your problems tend to go away? enough now. advantage of by more dominant people and this inability to assert yourself may result in smoldering hostility occasionally this anger builds to an emotional level at which point you may explode in rage if you're feeling violent it may be because you're afraid of losing control of intense emotions are you enjoying this this is just an exercise is it but I'm doing it for real. What are you feeling? Does this turn you off? Robert. I must warn you, your actions will have repercussions.
my dearest wonder, by my own hand, I offered you my life. By my own hand, I must now take it. I sign my name for the last time. By leading you through carefully structured scenarios within a protected environment, we aim to increase your arousal to conventional stimulus and to teach you the relevant social skills to enable you to put this into practice. Through the use of extensive role-playing exercises, we will ensure that you continue your restructured behavior into real-life situations, enabling you to find pleasure, arousal, and fulfillment from socially acceptable modes of behavior. <laughs>